Robert, do you want to just pre- briefly uh, uh, recount for our two guests uh, and our listeners who weren't listening to us last week um, uh, the, the theory behind the planet X? Absolutely. The interesting thing about the Sumerian writing is besides depicting our solar system, they have the same stories that are in the Bible, such as Noah, Adam and Eve, mm-hmm. um, you know, sure. the Garden of Eden. As a matter of fact, if you read the literature of 19th century skeptics like Thomas Paine, this is a constant point that he makes, yeah. uh, in, uh, implying that the Bible is in fact nothing other than a... Um, a uh, collection of myths that have been borrowed from... Uh, uh, let, me, let me put it back a minute for Robert, because I want Robert to, to, to give us the real, the, you know, the real reason why he's referring back to those ancient texts. Okay. The theory is that there's another planet in our solar system. Uh, the ancients called it Nibiru. There's actually 54 different cultures that have names for this, uh, not just Sumerians. Sumerians just being the oldest. And they say there's a race of beings that live on this planet that goes around our sun and goes out around another brown dwarf in our solar system is binary. This race of beings came down to Earth to mine and created us as a slave race. Um, the Eden is where these beings were said to have lived, the, between the Tigris and Euphrates where that River. Written? That's the Eden in the Bible. So where is it written? Uh, Pardon me? Where, where is it? Iraq. Uh, modern day Iraq. At that time, you know, Babylon, Mesopotamia. Yes, I know. I, I, I'm asking, was it in the Sumerian text? that these people came down and lived in this Eden place and created Exactly. Then went to Africa to the mine. Mm-hmm. As far as the existence of Planet X, um, I'm sure you guys have heard some of the stories well, about... What exactly know, do you mean when you say for us being created? Well, this... As a ancient what? tablets tell us that these beings came to Earth and were mining, and they didn't like to do the work. It was hard work. So they created a slave. They I made their DNA. I apologize, Robert, but I'm curious, what ancient tablets, because I've read so many, there's about 5,000 or so clay tablets and cylinder seals in museums around the world uh, that were found Are you in talking Sumer- about Sumeria. So these ancient tablets are in the world, all the planets, and people supposedly cracked the DNA code and manufactured the human beings in test tubes to create a race of slaves? Exactly. They mixed their DNA with Homo erectus or whatever it was that was native to this planet and created us. Um, Are you talking about the Elba tablets? I'm talking about the ancient Sumerian tablets. You can see them online at xfax.com. Right. Now, I've looked through all those, and I never saw... I'd, I'd be very interested. I'm not disputing what you're saying. It sounds fascinating, but I'd love to see the evidence. And I, I really encourage you to take a look at it, because you guys are talking yeah. about... Uh, no life in our solar system or the or study the possibility of finding something. Humans are not native to this planet. Uh, there have been advanced civilizations much more advanced than we are now on this planet. And, you know, when you, when you speak of things like Atlantis... Let me just, let me just interject here as the interlocutor um, and, and say this to you. First of all, I want to take a break. I'm coming up to a, a quick commercial break, so I, I'm going to need to take that and keep our sponsors happy. But what I'd like to do when I come back from that break, Robert, and I guess this was my question to you uh, a few moments ago before you all got into such uh, a wonderfully uh, heated discussion, uh, was the actual theory of Planet X itself. Are we going to be collided with something that's, that's hurling out of space towards us? And we can go in in our last 20 minutes to, to what you can conclude to be the evidence for that. But I just wanted to make our guests and our listeners familiar with, with the, the theory of Planet X per se. Thank you. I'd love to get into that. Okay, well, we'll do that immediately. We come back from this commercial break. Okay, back to Robert Sefer and, and, uh, and a description of Planet X, please. Yeah, there's another planet in our solar system. Uh, this planet has a 3,600-year orbit, passes by Earth every 3,600 years. Zachariah Sitchin in his Earth Chronicles in the book he wrote, The Twelfth Planet, says that the last passing was 2,000 years ago. So we're not due for another 1,600 years or so. I'm in disagreement with this, and I'd like to take, you know, 20, 30 seconds to give some of the evidence Please. for, you know, why. When we go back 3,600 years, uh, 1,600 B.C., we see ocean levels drop 16 to 20 feet. Uh, tree rings show that there were earth changes, the Sahara Desert formed, the Minoan civilization ended, uh, Niagara Falls riverbed was formed. The Great Lakes Basin formed. Um, Mastodon in northern Siberia that were flash frozen 3,600 years ago. 
hundred years ago. What would cause such geological change <clears throat> literally overnight? Um, if you go back 7,000 years, Black Sea deluge occurred, uh, tsunamis in Scotland and Australia, we have uh, you know many fresh lakes turning salty. You go back another 3,600 years, you have the Ice Age ending, <clears throat> Atlantis sinking, and there's a clear uh, pattern to these cataclysms that happen in the 3,600 year cycle. All the talk of, uh, you know, apocalypse or some, you know, Jesus says there's going to be earthquakes in the end times or Edgar Casey giving predictions or, you know, this is, this is the cataclysms that everyone's talking about. The Mayan cycles, you know, the Mayan calendar, I mean, this is what we're talking about. And you're thinking this is to occur when? Next year? Well, I can't pinpoint it to a date, but uh, I, Robert, on one thing, sure. Uh, I do agree with the part that you said about the Earth reversing. Peter Warlow wrote a book back in the early '80s called "The Reversing Earth." No question about it. And he showed that the Earth has uh, its magnetic field has shifted many times, and that he he says that there's real evidence. And you mentioned some of it just a moment ago. But the that, question that's is one of the reasons for the climate changes. So. I do see that, and I also want to point out in the book of Revelation, it states that when these cataclysms happen, how the earth will tremble and quake, but in the book of Isaiah, it says that the earth will roll up as a scroll, so that in indicates that it will tip over on its axis. So your idea that the earth tipping over on its axis can cause these problems is, I agree with you completely, uh, the, uh, the idea of this parallel planet, I've not seen evidence of it, I'd like to look into it further, but I've seen nothing that proves it. Well, interesting as can be. Yeah, I've come across a few newspaper articles on this, but what exactly is Planet X supposed to do? Well, like I said, it causes a pole shift. Now, it doesn't have to collide with us because of the gravitational the attraction of this larger body. Exactly. Just okay. as if you took two magnets next to each other, they each other. Okay. Planets are like big magnets. Mm -hmm. so right. Now, as far as the current Earth changes, this is the first indicator to look at. What's causing all these Earth changes? You know, scientists are saying that cow flatulence, uh, the gas from cows, or, you know, the methane, is depleting our, our atmosphere, our ozone, and this is, this is causing uh, global warming. Yeah, you know, that and they measure in gases. But we have increased volcanism, we have increased... My panel is contributes to that. Yes, we have, we have, you know, the, the caps on Mars are melting, the polar caps. Cow gas has nothing to do with Mars. This has nothing to do with pollution. You see, there's effects happening all over the solar system. Now, there are all sorts of things could be going on simultaneously with independent causes. Well, things don't just happen, they're caused. And yes. And I have no idea. Where, where is this planet at? Yeah, what about these sightings, though, Robert? That would be interesting to yeah, Well, exactly. Where is it? How far is it from us? Is it, is, is it approaching us? What's wrong with NASA, and why haven't they told us about it? Mark Hazelwood made the point that, you know, why would anybody invest in any shares? What would happen to the stock market if we announced that there was to be a, a, exactly. a, a collapse uh, or, or uh, but, a, 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 a but the disaster? The disaster the here. When? Well, well that, that's exactly I'd right. I'd say probable this decade and definitely within our lifetime. Really? Father Malachi Martin. Are you I know Malachi Martin very well. I've met him. The Guru and Jesuit priest by the name of Father George Coyne, who is the director of the Vatican Observatory. Yes, sir. So, again, you know, there's, there's, there's indications all over. And well, who, frankly, did, who did discover this other planet? And why don't they? I mean, just like the guy that discovered the planet. planet? Well, well here's, here's the thing. You know, why don't they just make it public and let us know? Like I said, what would happen? What would happen to religions? What would happen to well, the economy? Okay, what would happen to... Well, I think no, the thing that you really have, have missed here is your evidence for the existence of Planet X. Well, well I don't want to let you. I'll, I'll address that. Okay, okay but let me okay. just cut across you both here. And, and, and I want to do this because we are down to the last 15 minutes of the show, and I want to give everybody a fair crack of the whip here. One, uh, one comforting thought for us here in Nevada is that we've built Yucca Mountain to go and hide it. We're not going to 